if you use like an, an idiom or a turn of phrase or something that she hadn't heard before, she'd have you repeat. You'd have me repeat it again. You'd be you're like, like, I'll like scratch I said your back. Yeah, and, and you're like, you and you'll be you're like, I'll scratch your back. <laughs> And Who's you, who that and touch you my, scratch, you touch I'll get my, mine. It's yeah. the same way that I have this like fantastic scar across my skull. It's like the size and shape of a horseshoe. And as of right now, I wonder if you can see on this video, but like I'm getting these white hairs and they're all originating from the incision point. So like there might be a choice that like at that point, like when I'm coming gray, it's all gonna come first on the incision points. I'm just gonna have this like weird white scar <laughs> of hair. Ooh, which is awesome. Were you not? No, no, we were um, at a Priscilla's bar. Priscilla's a gay, bar. gay bar, city gay bar in the ex outskirts of Edinburgh. And uh, and I was singing with Laura, and we were mid-song. Say what you were singing. I was singing um, Total Eclipse of the Heart. So That's Lauren true. just like drops over mm. like a stone, and then you hear BJ like cackling, like Because right. <laughs> he thought she was just drunk and tripped. And, and was, high and heels. He's cruel. <laughs> and, and then so I get this email from BJ. Basically this email saying that Lauren was probably going to die. Um, Why did I just send My sister came and picked me up at the airport and I made her take me directly to like an internet cafe because I didn't have a phone I could check mm. my email <laughs> I didn't want to wait. And then I got the email as soon as I got off saying that you'd come through surgery and so far, you know, you were alive and no one knew what you were going to be like when you woke up, but at least like, you know, right. they thought you weren't going to die now. Whenever it's possible, I, I listen to textbooks. Digital textbooks are really helpful for text to speech because just the nature of my brain damage, it, it's still harder to read words on a page. I miss connective words like of or for. So in a scientific textbook, this is, these are important words. I mean, I had largely lost my abilities to speak, read, and write fluently um, in the earliest stage. Which was, was such just, a big part of you. Right, I was a PhD student, I was a writer, a director, I was a, an, actress. an actress for many years. Actress, singer, dancer, writer, director, PhD. <laughs> when I woke up, I, I had to stay in Scotland for a while. Um, but while I was still there, I started writing a journal. I mean, it was actually helpful in communication. For whatever reason, it was easier he to write, write down. before you could talk. Right. Yeah, So, So, you know, as I was trying to remember words, I would write them down, and as soon as I could see them on the page, then I could say them, then I could think of them. I remember, actually, one, it was a really simple one. It was just something like, I said, oh, maybe I'll, I'll pop over there to pick something. It was like something mm. like that, I'll pop over. And right. you're like, pop over, pop over. <laughs> You mean you'll pop? I was like, it means to you know, and like you had to sort of break everything down in this right. way that was really interesting. Yeah, very visually. Yeah. But it was extremely challenging. Um, and just little by little, I've been teaching myself, you know, aspects of neurology and physiology, uh, and I ended up taking um, a behavioral neuroscience class. I smile because I got a name. This class was not being modest. It's six months since the uh, cerebral hemorrhage, mm. and I was thinking, you know, I was thinking that my recovery might be almost done. You know, yeah. I was like, oh, I think I'm good now. I mean, conversations are simple, you know, and I, I knew that I was doing yeah. fine. And when I opened it up on, you know, the month after the rupture, just opened it up to September, um, I was absolutely shocked. It was impossible for anyone to read it. I have some of your emails from that time that Gibberish. I saved where there, it's like they're out of order, you know, yeah. like the sentence is out of order. And those things I would take hours to compose. Yeah, to, I know, I know. I, yeah, it took, yeah. I would try to remember how a phrase of a sentence would work. Yeah, and then the sentences would be things like, this do you... To, yes, tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Like they had, know, like, it was just like a non-native. It was like a non-native English speaker. It was like, but even a little bit. bit more out of order than that. <laughs> <laughs> I had the entire textbook read to me, and because I had never had a scientific background, I was learning chemistry with brain chemistry, like electrophysiology and pharmacology, and more, more than more than anything else. Neuronet. That's a writer that says that writing um, is like pulling teeth, but out of your dick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a dick, but I imagine that wouldn't be very comfortable. Sounds like a kidney stone. Yeah, like mm. a kidney stone. Mm. I, whatever was happening to me, whatever, I couldn't understand it, but I was fascinated by it. Yeah, I remember at the time you saying how you felt like you were this totally different person. It was all exciting, you know? There was no moments of feeling trepidatious. 
part of that is not my spirit. Part of that is just brain damage. Like, I mean, yeah. I just didn't know how long it would take and what was really missing. Well, and I think what's interesting about it, too, is that a lot of times you hear memoirs talk about how you need a certain distance from an event in order right. to be able to sort of compute it and I, write about it. And But you were sort of writing in real time. Right, but I don't think that that, I mean, that distance is necessary. But it's not, like, the writing itself isn't easier. You just have, like, in your mind, like, well, I can do this. I did this once before. I sort of know, you you know, you know, like, the kind of states, the varying states of despair and euphoria that mm. you go through, like, on the <laughs> journey of doing it and, like, how long it takes. And Even now, I'll, I'll replace pronouns, you know. As I'm talking about I, I'll write he or she or they instead of me, you know. Just, yeah. You'd also never written a book before. So right. Kind so kind of, like, I get a little working out the process of writing a book along with working out the process right. of... Of having a brain damage. Brain damage. <laughs> Some brain damage. Yeah. Like the people around me were telling me to persevere and persevere. And that they were missing something amazing that was happening. That like that actually to persevere I'd have to go back to life as normal and, and that what what was happening right now is kind of magical. You know, that everything I was getting to get the joy I had as a child, you know, like like good homonyms are a great example. Like I had totally forgotten that homonyms exist. <laughs> I know, but they're fucking amazing. They're amazing. And like, because you can suddenly have two images right next to each other mm. and they have nothing to do with each other. Like pain, you know, like, yeah. you know, physical pain, excruciating pain, right. or like the pain of a window. Yeah. You know, that you could like, that those things could share the same sonic sphere. <laughs> like that those could be the same thing. In the memoir, I don't want to misidentify natures of, of this damage. Like, you can't say that there, there's water, that there's water damage in Tennessee when there was a flood in New Hampshire. You know, like, you have to know what is what, and you know, what, what hurt what, what was related to what. And sometimes I'll never know, but other times there is a clear explanation for, for the type of damage I sustained and, and what lasting effects have come from.